are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike and here, your host, back with another episode up in Edmond, Oklahoma today with return guest Taylor Gooch. Um, it's been two, three years since you last came on the podcast. Yes. A lot has changed since you last came on the podcast. Uh, I, I mean, there's been a thing called COVID happened too. So That's it's, happened. It's been more than two years then, for sure. It has. I'm going to look back through my notes. I should have probably pulled this up before we start recording, but I'm going to look back because when we last met and you did the podcast, uh, you were planning a wedding. Uh, you've had a baby since then. Um, you've won a golf tournament on the PJ Tour. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's happened. Yeah. So hopefully, let's let's do this in another let's, few yeah. years, and hopefully, as many good things have happened as well. It was February the 21st of 2019. God, it's crazy. And that was episode 37. So I'll link that below if people want to go back and listen to kind of like your origin story, which is a lot of what we covered going to Oklahoma State and growing up and kind of, you know, love for golf and all that stuff. Yeah. We don't have to cover that stuff anymore because we've already done it, which is a good thing for people listening. They can go and check that other episode out. Um, but, mate, uh, good to catch up. It's been a while, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, as you know, it's a kind of a crazy life that that and schedule that, I'm in the midst of right now, so uh, I'm glad this worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're in, you know, we're in, we're recording at the end of February. TPC or, or the waste management just happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have never been down there, but I mean, chaos, I think is the only word that works. <laughs> yeah. What's it like stepping into that arena and making twos? Yeah, man, you know? dude, it's, it's. Did you make three twos? Yeah. 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 Uh, two twos. Two I mean, twos. I birdie. Uh, Friday, Saturday, yeah, yeah, and it's it's I always tell people it's the best way I can describe it is it's the the whole thing is a spectacle like mm-hmm. it's it's a bucket list thing that everyone needs to do because it's just it's such an anomaly. Uh, but you know, as a player walking, you know through through the tunnel to a sixteen T, it's just. It's, it's the one moment in our sport where you feel like a gladiator almost, right? Yeah. You know, people talk about how it's comparable to other sports where it's, you know, feels like you're going into Lambeau or you're going into Yankee Stadium or something. But it's it's even different than that because, like, I, I, I compare it to being like a gladiator almost because, like, when you go in there, the, there's not – 24 other players on the field that like it's it's you like yeah. and you have the entire crowd this entire stadium and it's all honed and focused in on you yeah. and you're trying to do what i think is one of the toughest thing in all of sports is hit a golf ball where you try to, to get it to go right and so it's just yeah. it's crazy it's awesome um i'm glad that we don't do it on a weekly basis because it is it's it's a lot yeah uh, but man it's 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 so cool and i think it's just great for the game uh, yeah well and it's not I, I i watched a little bit of the coverage and it's not just that hole that's loud it's loud everywhere right no doubt like there's no golf etiquette it's like a happy gilmore scene it's oh. thrown out the window like there's just people everywhere screaming at you yeah you know and i think watching some of the clips of watching people tee it up i think xander was over a tee shot on like 15 maybe water left i think and it's like some as he's pegging it in the ground this guy's like don't hit it in the water I'm oh like, yeah what oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> so on the i i a former pj tour player's name is john mallinger the mm-hmm. monday uh after the waste management uh he had a charity event that a handful of us players went and, and played and, and helped him out and whatnot and one of the guys that came and joined is is colt no and mm-hmm. so he's you know does some of the color commentary and yeah. whatnot and he so this was the monday after the, the waste management finish and so we're all just telling stories talking about the week and everything uh, on the flight there and and he goes the craziest story i probably had he goes I'm sitting there and I hear like I see, you know, this group of girls, you know, all in high heels and like dressed to the nines when you're at a golf you're tournament, a golf and tournament. you're like, pe- most people are walking miles and miles. And yeah. he goes, obviously they weren't there for golf. And he goes, I, he- I heard one of them essentially say like, oh wait, th- 
this there's a golf tournament here <laughs> and that's a, a great way to describe it it's it's a basically like a music festival yeah. and there happens to be golf being played in the middle of right it. in the middle it's of crazy it. yeah it's well and like it's kind of influencer central too isn't it or like people trying to be influencers always seem to mm-hmm. go there and like i mean that's kind of like that puts me off yeah you know? uh, yeah it's it's not very golf like in that sense uh but again like i said I, it's just it's a great way to bring yeah you know energy notoriety to the game and whether it's in the uh you know the the old fashioned way yeah. or not? It, mm-hmm. I think it's it's, oh, it's it still works. good press. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, are you nervous standing over that t shirt? Like, are you shaking? Like, is it like real? It's, oh, it, it's a real thing, right? Oh, no doubt about it. I, I remember. So the first year I played it, I was right after, probably right before whenever we met mm-hmm. or did our first the, the first podcast. It was back in nineteen. And on Tuesday, I was playing practice round, and my one of my good buddies, Max Homa, uh, had just Monday qualified to get in. So I'm like, I text him like Tuesday, let's go play, you know, practice round. And so we walked off the nine green, mm-hmm. and we hear like this huge like roar. And it's a Tuesday, like this right. isn't Sunday, this isn't Saturday. Tuesday, there's roars on 16. Yeah. Like we look at each other, and we're like, what the heck, dude? <laughs> this is this is not normal. And and so we end up getting to 16 and I'm walking through the tunnel on 16 and my heart rate starts to go. Mm. And I'm like, dude, it's not even Wednesday or third. Like this is yeah. Tuesday and it's getting your juices going. And so, yeah, it, it, dude, it, it brings a whole different uh, just energy and feeling too so yeah you're, you're nervous for sure yeah and, and the good thing is like the there's a lot of tee boxes there too right so it's not just like a wedge it's yeah. like you know, oh yeah i mean you especially that back flag mm-hmm. right? you're hitting what little eight little eights maybe little sevens depending it, on time of day yeah we i was playing with adam hadwin on maybe saturday and and we were talking about like how that back pin it's a tough pin mm-hmm. especially when the greens get bouncing and he goes man he goes i remember one year there was a little bit of wind picking up and it was like a little bit chilly he goes i hit six iron in like yeah. So it's you can have a wedge in like when Sam Ryder made the hole in one. There was a wedge that day. They scooted up. They want they put a you know kind of a tucked pin where you could kind of yeah. go at it. Uh, so it can be a wedge or it can be you know seven eight six seven yeah. eight iron kind of thing. So it's a it's it's awesome. Well, it's probably great to have a few of the guys there too, right? A few of the boys down there and and just kind of made a week of it rather than just like it's not just a normal golf tournament. Like you kind of hey guys, it's gonna have a good time and like yeah. you know and it helps. Obviously, you played pretty well that week too. Oh yeah, for sure. No it's it's always fun to you know have you know family friends and you know people to there to support and hang out when you get done golf and go go kick it uh but it makes it that much more fun when you know kind of get in the thick of things a little bit yeah yeah it, talking of music festivals it's kind of i mean you never see this but i wouldn't be surprised if there were fights out there right you know drinks flying around people saying stuff and like you know oh the, i mean it's gonna happen i mean so uh, obviously i'm you know in the thick of it like grinding but um i mean you always hear stories about how many people are getting arrested this you know this fight that's that fight what my caddy and i like to do is we like to point out each year each round the passed out drunk guys like you can literally see like (laughs) you can point them and spot them from distance like oh dude look at him he's passed out over there so you get man you the the stories are endless needless to say such a cool spot though i mean i guess it's a bucket list for a lot of people to go to and the the amazing thing is it's centered around a sport that we both love which is just you know never really thought that that would actually be possible in Mm -hmm. a real professional setting but it is correct correct i heard a crazy stat maybe two years ago um it one of the days had set the record for like a single day sporting event mm-hmm. attendant like attendance record yeah and it had like surpassed the Olymp- like some olympic record of a single day sporting event attendance and i was like that's crazy yeah crazy it, it's mad um like i said i haven't done it but i, I have to take it off the list just to see it but bucket list absolutely if people are listening and can and can hear a little voice in the background we i mean you, you we are in the house uh thank you for having me over and and we have i mean you have an addition to the family little baby collins mm-hmm. uh how's dad life man it's been it's been as dads know out there it's been amazing it's been challenging it's you know ups downs sleeps no sleeps at times thankfully i have a wife that helps on that end so that the no sleeps doesn't happen as much for me uh but man it's it's life has grown and it started off uh, a bit of a whirlwind for us because 
she was born on a Wednesday and I left Sunday mm. uh, to go over to your part of the world and play the British Open. Yeah. And it was funny. I, I text uh, one of my buddies who kind of helps me on the uh, some of the finance side of things. And when I was literally on the, the flight over, I text him. I'm like over the Atlantic Ocean and I have a four day old baby. And I was like, all right, dude, we need to talk about life insurance because <laughs> I'm on this flight, I'm going to a foreign country and I have a four day old baby. So, yeah. um, we started off with the whirlwind and, uh, it's, it's really hasn't slowed down since. That's good though. Right. That's, I mean, as, as, as people like to say, you know, announcers like to say this, you got more context and you got more, you know, the more to play for now, right? There's, there's a little bit, a little bit more there than just, than just you and Ali now. Correct. Um, but you know, perspective, I think, is what they like to say. Or they love to repeat on the on right. BJ tour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going to the Open for the first time, that was a kind of a late. You found out pretty late, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, we were at the hospital, or no, we were at the doctor's office making like one of the last. Uh, you know, visits before, you know, she was going to go into labor and it was not even like a month before. And um, we find out like, all right, you're in. And so like, we're having to make game time because of course I'm like, I can't leave you like two days after, but then at the same time, it's like, I'm first time getting into the open. And so it's just, yeah, it was, it was needless to say it was a whirlwind of a time. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm, fortunate and thankful that, that it happened the way that it did because it, it it was crazy I yeah. mean, it, could, it could have gone a bunch of different ways and fortunately it, it all worked out well yeah and and you played in the open like during covid i remember mm-hmm. texting you saying you need to go to this place this place and you're like yeah. i'm pretty much locked down like, oh yeah which is tough yeah um, but i think you did tell me that the um the players lounge had good wine I think is what you told me. Yes, I did. They Which had a, a little whiskey. They they had it, it was it, it stood up to the expectations of European tour golf mm-hmm. uh, and how they uh, the, you know you always around Ryder Cup time you, you think about the camaraderie of the European team versus you know USA and and it just makes sense you know when you go and see like after the rounds like they're literally going to the bar and the locker room and having a drink together and kicking it where you know in the states it's just it's not as buddy buddy as that uh so that was that was that was such a cool you know part of the week yeah well so what i mean going over there had you played links golf before that had you been to europe and played golf on a buddy's trip no it was first first time over to europe yeah so the wind's not really an issue because you i mean you grew up in oklahoma playing Mm -hmm. oklahoma state so wind is not an issue but just general different golf over there isn't it a lot of like a lot of ground balls and pop yeah. bunkers of the enemy and yeah what was that first I mean, first experience like or first practice round like yeah uh well the first practice round was straight off the plane so it was a, a little bit uh you know I, I probably don't remember much actually but <laughs> no it was um man it was, it was so cool and um you know like you said the wind part wasn't you know foreign to me mm-hmm. the the tough part uh was the the speed of the greens and around the greens you know like like you often see like uh we we joke about the scores probably like the walking you know the standard bear and the scores that you know put into the system uh you know green hit putting it's like there's probably times where they messed up because like there's so often yeah there's really no difference right and so uh that that was an adjustment and um you know we talked about how much of an advantage it was uh like colin and you know a few other obviously big names went the week prior and played the scottish before gotcha and we're talking about what an advantage that was because you just you start to get acclimated with that style of golf with the speed of the Mm -hmm. the greens the the just the undulation around the greens just getting that just acclimated and familiar with it all the the nuance of it because it it is you know as you know it's it's very very different and in what we're trying to do the difference between winning and missing the cut or playing well or not it's it's you know it's very very slim and so yeah, that yeah. that little bit of comfort and familiarity and just that acclimation to that style of golf it, it makes a big big difference yeah that's one thing i noticed when i first came to the states i struggled to putt and chip because the greens are so fast and i remember right. the first usga event i played in i was like i felt like i was putting down the stairs and right. i putted so bad that week because i just i'd never putted on greens that fast yeah. but for you it's the opposite you're going there oh. you know they're putting at like a 10 right or right. 11 maybe right right you know if it's windy they are but they don't look like they're fast Either. Right. You know, there's a lot of growth there, so they don't break as much. And like, mm-hmm. I mean, are you a die putter or are you a bit of like a? I'm I'm a little bit of a die putter, which so for me makes it yeah. tough. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, it was such a such a change, you know. God, it's I do miss it. Um, 
I can't wait to go back and play some golf over there. But yeah, it's like after playing events here, you're just like, it's different golf. I and mean, people oh. don't get into it unless you've played both, right? Oh, no doubt. And you know, you always hear uh, in my world about you know the difference in the golf and the difference mm-hmm. in the fans, and and it's it's you know it's essentially the antithesis of what we were just talking about with the waste yeah. management. Like it's the complete opposite. And after now being over there, um, I haven't played the masters yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I tell people if I could win one golf tournament, it would be the open. Yeah. And it's because of the environment, the fans, just the way that they, you know, not that again, like I said, I love waste management. Mm-hmm. I love the rowdiness. Um, but there's just a different, um, type of respect for the game uh-huh. for for what we're doing um you know I, I played with bryson on saturday and this was at at the open and this was at a time when uh there was you know a lot of you know brooks and bryson yeah, and this yeah. and that chatter and whatnot and it was just crazy because i had played with them either right before or right after and it was just crazy to see the difference in how fans treated him there versus here yeah um and again like i said i i love some rowdiness i i wouldn't mind if golf got a little bit edgier, uh, but it's just, it's so cool to see kind of just the roots of a gentleman's game mm-hmm. be played and the fans kind of reciprocate kind of that just yeah. environment and that, that respect. Yeah. And, and the one thing that comes to mind is you probably got clapped a lot for like, if you were ever oh, like, if you were ever yeah. like short sighted, you're in a tough spot and you hit it to 10 feet, they probably really clapped you and they understood how good that shot was. Whereas out here you're like, I've just like stiff, basically got it to 10 feet and that's amazing. I have a world class shot. People are like, you don't get any claps. Right? Correct. Like, what are Correct. you doing? Yeah, no, it, we, we laughed about it because, you know, over here you can hit a wedge to 40 feet, but if it spun 20 feet to get to that 40 feet, people are, you know, yeah. going crazy because everyone's just so much more infatuated by the, the awe inspiring stuff, the mm-hmm. shock factor stuff here and where there, they just have a little bit better understanding of what, yeah. you know, the, the true, you know, just solid golf is right. what, 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 what a good play, what good golf is. So yeah, it's just yeah. different. Would you, do you think going forward then the plan would be to kind of, I guess, play the Scottish before and, and then take a, fa- I guess, take a family trip. Cause it'd probably be around, you know, your, your little one's birthday. Right. So that's yeah, uh, super ironic. You said that, but that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and so I would have loved to have last year gone to the Scottish, but, um, long story short, the PGA tour just recently, um, you know, basically got into a relationship with the European tour. Mm -hmm. And now the Scottish used to, they would send a handful of invites to, you know, players from the PGA tour U S. Um, and so, you know, I would have loved to play last year, but I wouldn't have gotten a spot in the field. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but now moving forward, because of the relationship with the PGA Tour and European Tour kind of changing, um, there's now going to be guaranteed awesome. a lot more spots for PGA Tour players. Yeah. And so based off of my play, I'm going to have a spot into that field. And so it, it's, a, like I said, it's such a value uh, to, so valuable to go and play the week before. And it's just, right. you know, get a chance yeah. to go and play. I mean, it's a dream come true kind of thing. And like you said as well, uh, we keep talking about this. This little girl is going to be a little bit spoiled because uh, we just went in and submitted all of her uh, passport paperwork because she's going to be coming over. My wife and girl yeah. are going to come over for the Scottish, for the for the British, and her birthday's you know over yeah. the, at the same time. Awesome. And so it's it's uh, it's going to be a cool trip. What a great time for her to have a birthday! Oh right? yeah, <laughs> must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, birthday trips forever now. Well, sorry. I mean, as long as you're playing they're going to be around the open in the scottish right? oh and just that on top of it i, I have uh, a couple weeks off after the open yeah and so we're going to stay over there and spend an extra week we don't know for sure where we're going to go yet but we're thinking maybe france wine or, and champagne yeah. country i mean just you, you know yeah. when you're when you're that close you might as well pop over there definitely that's uh i mean that's a must isn't it and like like you said it, it's benefit to you you know, from a performance standpoint, and it's also a benefit just because you're there. It's something you love to do. I mean, why not? You know, the flights are the... the, the the flights are the same if you stay for a week or for or a month. Uh, that's exactly you know? right. Like, that's exactly right. So, uh, yeah, that'd be really cool to do that. And and like I said, when you plan it out, you can plan out plenty of things to do. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, 
there's plenty of other stuff to do and, and maybe you can time it up with I don't know what the F1 schedule is but I'm sure you could time it up with going to an F1 race so it too. was Silverson last year was yeah. during the Open there we and go. Uh, if I would have missed the cuts you gone I would have popped over and, <laughs> and gone to it uh, uh, one of my good buddies Harold Varner who we were just mm-hmm. talking about uh, popped over and, and uh when it, and enjoyed it so yeah, yeah that would that would be f- now if it's on the sunday of the open i would rather yeah. be playing but of course uh yeah no that would be that would be sweet yeah you mentioned playing with bryson a couple of times um i mean what's it like watching him you know standing on a tee box watching him and i guess did you know him before that you probably saw his transformation right oh for sure yeah know, I mean, just we, kind of seeing like that man mountain that he is now and yeah. how hard he's hitting it yeah you know it's it's something that's obviously a huge narrative and the golf world yeah. and media world of you know how long he hits it and whatnot but it can't be overstated what he's done because mm-hmm. you know I've, I've since junior golf into college amateur golf and now i've he's a year younger than me but mm-hmm. we played so much together and yeah and i mean he used to be just an average length guy like i hit it further yeah. than him he mm-hmm. was not a long ball hitter by any means uh in fact his strength was how sh- dang straight he hit it yeah. right it was impressive how straight he hit it. correct <laughs> yeah and and it's just i mean again it cannot be overstated the the transformation and how far he really hits it now mm-hmm. like it's it's absurd it's yeah. it's it again I'm, like i said it's a narrative people talk about so much because the long ball gets all the attention but it, it truly is absolutely incredible what he's yeah, been able to yeah. do did you dive i mean do you do a lot of kind of stats and dive into your numbers to see like is it worth me trying to not change my swing but trying to get in the gym more and focus my gym stuff more to gain an extra two or three mile an hour i mean is that um, something that you kind of thought, hey, that's worth it? Or I, are you just like, ah, I'll just stick to my putting? Yeah, that's for, you know, for me, um, I, I don't think that that's I, the, the possible downside of it yeah. is not worth because uh, there's, you know, he's not the first one to try to yeah. gain mm-hmm. distance. Right. And you just far too often. Historically, you've seen guys that have struggled when they've made that change mm-hmm. and he's kind of more of the anomaly of he's continued to progress. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing is keep trying to progress. And, yeah. uh, and I'll let, I'll let him, you know, be the, be the, the show pony for, you know, changing you know, your body and your right. swing speed and all that. Yeah. I don't think Ali'd be too thrilled if you turned the house into a workout room and had a golf simulator in the front room, living room in front of the TV correct. and the whole gym work. Yes. System. Correct. <laughs> correct. That the, he's got a, he's got the bachelor pad set up. Let's just say that set up for sure. Uh, but I mean, to that point, like obviously fitness is a huge part of, of, of your golf preparation. I mean, it, you know, it's still something that you do, right. You're doing a lot and, and your trainer, um, is was he Tiger's old trainer or I mean how the same guy right? Mm-hmm. I yeah, f- forget his name, but obviously Col- Colby Tulier right is stuff. his name. Yeah, okay. yeah, he works with a bunch of guys on, on Justin Thomas, Harold Varner, yeah. Lucas Glover. Uh, you know, a, a bunch of a bunch of guys, and uh, he works with a bunch of guys in different sports. But he's yeah, I mean it's you know when I uh, was a senior in college, I had a, a back injury, and it was because of you know when I was in college, I was doing workouts that were let's just say not golf uh, right. specific workouts show and, muscles and, workouts. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, um, you know, I, I, as, as we know in this game, you know, it, it's a little bit different when you have injuries here versus other sports where other sports, you, you can power through injuries. You can, you know, play on a little bit of a, you know, of a tight back or you can yeah. play on a, you know, a bum ankle or something. You can kind of play through the pain, but in golf, you know, because we're, we're such such a refined sport Mm -hmm. any kind of difference in your body it makes a huge difference and so you know the the health and the longevity of of you know what you're doing is is of the utmost importance and so everything i'm doing from a training perspective of course we want to be faster but the the priority is to continue to maintain health and create longevity with with my game yeah is most of it then focused towards speed like just core and speed Uh, i mean it's everything you know uh we we try to add mass you know as well because uh, you know from a repetitive Mm. you know perspective like the only thing that that absorbs the 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 brunt of the force when you're hitting ball after ball after ball is mass right yeah um and that's also why just to be frank you don't see a lot of you know five percent you know fat 
golfers because that's just not the way that's i mean not to quote john daly but right. fat doesn't get pulled yeah. right so like we have to have a little bit of mass to our you know our, yeah, our yeah, yeah. Core, you know our you know our body to to kind of take the brunt of the you know day after day week after week repetition um yeah. i was I always tell people there was a cool um sports science episode that espn used to do a series called sports science and they mm-hmm. did an episode uh where they highlighted uh i think bubba watson swing and they put a bunch of like you know those balls yeah, that yeah. would you know kind of show in 3d mm-hmm. you know what the swing is doing what your body is doing and everything and they said basically up to that point of everything that they had measured and all across the other, you know, all the other sports, they were like, the golf swing is the second most violent movement in sports that we have measured outside of. They did a linebacker in the NFL, I forget who it was, uh, that like going... Explosive movements. Yeah, Yeah, going through and hitting a a running back. And they were like, other than that movement and that force and that violence, the golf swing is the second most violent thing on the body. And so because we're standing still in the same spot, people don't view it as a violent sport. I'm not saying it's a violent sport, but what I'm saying is it's not, it's not easy on the body. And especially when it's as much repetition as what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the ground rotation and it's, I mean, you're right. Like it makes sense when you say it like that. And nobody, I wouldn't think of it like that. But right. listening to you explain it, like it makes total sense, right? Because of the rotation and, and talk and all the other stuff. Like, not to mention if you're trying to hit a stinger or what or other shots. Like you, yeah. you know, like everyone knows Tiger and all the in- injuries he had from that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating how, like you mentioned, you know, it's such a you know like a fine line between, you know, even if you've just crook, woken up with a crook neck. Like, cause you've slept on a bad pillow, whatever it is, like it's, it's going to affect your game, you know, like, and I remember once I played and I'd like, I think I, I, I bite my nails cause I just, I'm, I've always bit my nails. I tried to stop and I can't stop, but I remember biting my nails too much and playing golf the next day and it was cold and I it affected my grip pressure. Right. <laughs> like, oh, absolutely. Like, little absolutely. things like it's, it's nuts how it works. And when you're playing back home in freezing cold weather and it's, you know, it's and you're playing with blades cause you're 16 and you think you're, you know, all, yeah, all invincible. special. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like absolutely. MP3 to Mizuno butter knives. I used to play with cause I thought I was cool. <laughs> Guys um, are pure. They are, they're so good. But, um, going forward obviously you know you know, you're a winner now and, and congratulations on that because it's leading up to that you were so close knocking on the door and i remember texting austin you know i'm like is this the week you're gonna do it you know like and it was um what was it houston leading up right and then it was you played in you played with hovland right in the final group mm-hmm. and i'm just like oh you know like can it can this happen now yeah right. um and then obviously it happens at the rsm over the you know, week before Thanksgiving, right? You got all your family down there. I mean, as timing goes, like that's probably, you know, it's just a great time to have it. But I mean, talk me through like leading up to it, right? Like you've got all those kind of close, you know, you're like, I'm knocking on the door. I'm so close. It takes a lot of mental strength to continue to keep like, a lot of people would have been like, wow, I just came T2, like, you know, three times or whatever, like made a bit of money. I'm happy. Yeah. But I mean, part of you is saying, I can still do this. Let's get that first win. And you just refuse to, to back down. And then, you know, you go win the RSM. Yeah. I mean, just the, the competitor in you. So when, when I was playing in Mexico, it was Mexico when I played with Victor in the final round, um, you know, I had a chance to, to go win and I didn't get it done. And, you know, it's just like, it doesn't matter the, the type of success you have in golf whether it's you know making money or getting into different events or whatever like we still want to win like yeah. we're just you mm-hmm. know we're, we're competitors to our core and so um you know i've been playing some good golf for for a while um you know all summer i was hitting it really really well um and i hadn't i just hadn't got the putter hot mm-hmm. I, you know as we know golf oftentimes the results are not necessarily a reflection of what you're doing um you know you kind of need the golf gods at times you need certain courses to give you you know the certain type of greens that are fit your eye or whatever it may be it's just it's a it's a fickle game but you know i've been playing good golf for a while and so I, i knew I knew if I just kept doing what I was doing and if I stayed on track I was on and if I just, you know, trusted trusted my day to day and week to week process, I'm like, yeah. man, this we're we're gonna hit, you know. It's 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 there's too many things that are happening in a good way and I'm I'm 
getting in traffic, as my agent says. Yeah. He goes, just keep getting in traffic. And I kept getting in traffic too often, and I was playing too well to, you know, to not – get something done right. and, uh you know fortunately it was better late than never and and it it's just it's such a god thing because two weeks you know the the in mexico i was by myself mm-hmm. uh when i had a chance to win didn't have family friends you know nobody there and and i didn't get it done and it was you know it was crushing and then two weeks later you know have family there and you know obviously wife and and baby girl at the time was there and it was just such a god thing like i said for it was like he he said all right we're gonna wait until they're there to be there for your first win and so yeah. it was it was such a cool thing man yeah go go dive into that for me because uh, and the, the the god thing because i know it's a huge part of your life it's a huge part of your family life and your upbringing you know and if anyone follows you on instagram and sees you on a sunday you know you're, you're on live church and, you, and you're you know you're in that tell me about kind of that and just that i don't think we, we probably didn't cover this on our first podcast but just kind of like how, how how that's in your life how much it means to you and how also you kind of pull from pull strength from that too and rely on that kind of stuff as well as as a way to bounce you know things off and and just having that i guess uh, security in 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 faith uh, and yeah. the lord and, and just i want to touch on that a little bit yeah i was actually talking with someone about this yesterday so you know in a, in a game so in golf, the the greatest you know ever, I think, is Tiger, and mm-hmm. kind of at the peak of his career, he had won. I forget the number, but it was between twenty and twenty five percent of his tournaments he played in, he would he had won. Right, yeah. the next closest was Jack Jack Nicholas, and his was like twelve percent. So you're the third greatest of all time if you win one out of ten tournaments. So it's yeah. a, it's a game of failure, right? Yeah. And so in a, in a game of failure that there's you know lesson after lesson and defeat after defeat, you know it can be easy to get down on yourself. And so that's that's you know for me a you know such a uh, such a big part of who I am is to not rely on golf to be my identity mm-hmm. because if if how I viewed myself. Uh, was based off my results, I would view myself in a bad way. Um, you know, my identity is, is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and 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 what he views in us and, and what we're called to do, you know, while we're here on this this earth mm-hmm. for him and and so that that's you know, not only through the tough times but through the good times through it all, that that's who I lean on and, and that's that's what I'm always gonna fall on yeah, yeah. Is, is my faith, my belief and in, in you know, and what we're here for, and I know that what we're here for is more than just to hit a, a golf ball mm-hmm. around, right? Um, and so it, it's, you know, like I said, it, it was such a God thing that, you know, when I, I was getting close to winning, getting close to, to getting the job done, that, you know, I, I was, even though things were good and I, you know, was in condition, I was having some success, you know, there were still frustrating times. And so it was those times, even more so, you know, I'm, I'm you know, sitting in the back of the hotel room saying some prayers and asking like yeah. you know, what what was what this for how how am i supposed to react to this how do i respond yeah. to this and it's just the epitome of keeping faith and keeping my head down and, and trusting in his plan for me yeah and i mean the timing you're right couldn't you know couldn't be any better with the family there and you know i think you got a lot of love the following weeks from the pj tour their content um got a nice little bump on instagram with your followers yeah. right, now, right? And, and a bunch of other cool stuff and then um you know had had kind of like the the little video that they did on you guys in maui which was really cool um but going forward like because you are now a winner on tour you get a nice little a little bump in kind of tea times right and you get a little bit i mean how different was it you know being treated as a winner compared to being treated as someone who you know who, who's who's like i say that your average pj tour player because yeah. really, i mean there's you know 100 and however many guys are the best guys in the world but yeah. was there a significant difference well yeah and and it's it's <clears throat> in large part because of what i was just saying like you know the greatest ever are winning 10 percent of the time right yeah. and so that we we all know and understand and recognize how hard it is to win on the pga tour and and you get rewarded for it you know mm-hmm. plain and simple that's that's you know in our game in our sport it's the only thing that you do where you are then basically guaranteed a job for the next couple years right and so there there's tons of uh, benefits of winning you know everything from the masters to you know like i said having job security for the following two seasons uh to the tea times change you're in a different grouping of tea times um and so yeah there's a, a 
a bunch of benefit from it. And also, like I said, just the, the respect of, of your peers of knowing, you know what, like you got the job done and we yeah. all know that that's a, that's a, that's a big step. And that doesn't happen just on accident, you mm-hmm. know? And so it, it's, uh, it's a bunch of, a bunch of positives. And, and the cool thing too, is like, I was talking with, um, you know, my caddy about it. It's like, man, it's, it's cool to see, how I responded because it's it's so easy to think you know once you win you're gonna keep working hard and you're gonna yeah. keep staying focused and hungry but like I said it's the first time where you can take a breath like you do have two years of mm-hmm. your PJ tour card and you can you know be a little bit comfortable and so uh, you know I was always curious you know if I you know was to win on the PJ tour like how would I respond to that yeah and it was cool um, you know. I, it just made me hungrier for anything. It's like I got a little taste of victory, and it's yeah. like, dude, I want, I want to do that more. I want to keep you know? doing this now, yeah. Uh, so it was, man, it was, it was super cool, and, and yeah, I just, I, I liked that, you know, it didn't, it didn't, there was no complacency, yeah. you know, so. Uh-huh. Right, because a lot of, like you said, a lot of people get to that, you know, and I think um, the one example I think of, back to kind of our mutual love for Formula One, that, that Rush movie, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and and James Hunt who goes and wins his world championship and then just retires. Yeah, right. right like, right. Well, you know, like it's the total opposite. But I mean, there's people who have done it and and like that's their goal. They've got to their goal and and they just like, you know, like sponsors are coming in now because you're a winner and then you just kind of make that money last forever and, and go and do something else. So, right. you know, it, it's cool to hear you say that it just makes you hungrier because like you said, there are insane golf tournaments out there, you know, like winning a green jacket, you know, hoisting the carrot jug, the Wanamaker, playing a Ryder Cup, whatever it is, like, you know, you're not done yet, right? You know, and, and part of you getting a taste of that, it's like, oh, now I'm on the radar for potentially, I'm I'm definitely you know I'm in a, in a short list of group of guys that could get picked for a Ryder Cup because I've won a PJ Tour event, but I've still got to get there. I might have to go win another one or like top ten a bunch of times or whatever it is. So you know, no doubt the goals are to win majors and play a Ryder Cup. And I mean, I can't imagine the the time you would have if you and Max teed it up at a Ryder Cup. I'm sure you've spoken about that with no, him, yeah. but Rome, you know, like, 2023. 2023 in Rome. Yep. Yeah. Great food as well. To sell. Great food, a little decent wine. I will, you know? I will be rooting against you. Sorry. <laughs> that, hey, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but um, it would be awesome if I was there in person rooting against you. I'd love to do that. <laughs> as long as we can drink a little wine, cheers. We after can do that <laughs> for sure. Um, but, you know, like going, you're right, like staying hungry. And that, that's really special for you, you know, to, to just maintain that mentality and go forward and, you know, coming up, obviously we have the masters, right. The first time, you know, you, you, you're in it. Um, you know, I've text off buddy of yours. Like I'm going, I've already, I already planned everything. Uh, and that's the first thing I said to him too. I was like, hey, when you want I text him, I was like, are you going? He was, of course I'm going. Um, but have you been down there yet since the win? Have you had an invite to say, I mean, have you had the invites gone out yet? Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So that's so why you're going be, tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll be Great there the timing. next, uh, this, this yeah. Saturday and Sunday. And Mal's going to be there with you? Nope. No. Uh, no with- well, I mean, so until tournament week, caddies, you have to use the, you know, a, okay. a caddy from Augusta. So, okay. uh, yeah, I'm actually Max and me are going. So the two of us are going to go awesome. play some golf and use a course caddy yeah. uh, and go hang out. So Take be, it all in. It would be kind of sweet. Had, have you been there to watch it before? Uh, so we played a tournament in college my first two years at Augusta State University. Yeah. And it was the weekend. We played Saturday, Sunday, the weekend before the tournament, okay. the Masters Tournament Week. Yeah. So we would play Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, we all the teams that played would go and, okay. and walk around for the practice. So I've been there for a Monday yeah. uh, twice, but but that's it. I've, I've, I've had one other chance to go and play it prior to this and uh always said i didn't i had a goal i didn't want to play augusta yeah. until i had earned my rights into playing it and yeah. so uh I'm, it's pretty cool to be able to say okay i've earned was the right that, i'm gonna get to go play it. is that a superstition thing or just like i i don't feel like i can step just on the goal. grounds yeah. yeah just just a goal because most people would be like yes let, yeah when, come and go tomorrow that, yeah i'm yeah. going you know no, yeah just but, just a goal just a little bit something you know on the dartboard to, to yeah, keep yeah, you yeah. going Okay, uh, I mean to that point, what what are on the what are what's the on the goal board at the moment? You know, it's fun. I talk about this a lot with people. I I'm a big non-believer in short-term goals. Yeah. Like in, uh-huh. in you know, um, I I I learned early on in my career that if I'm 
you know, focusing on something that I can attain kind of in the near future, uh, I, I, I just lose sight of the bigger goals. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I just have one goal and that's to be the best that I golfer that I can be. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like because we're doing things and I've been blessed to do things that I honestly didn't know if I could do. Right. Um, and, and so it's like, I don't want to limit myself. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and so I, I, I know this, I know that we're going to, we have a, a process put in place that is going to, uh, give, give me and give us the, the best chance to be as good as possible. And I just, I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. And so I, I want to see, uh, I want to see what that what that turns into. Yeah, because I mean, breaking it down, all you can do is be the best that you can be every day, right? And that's going to take care of whatever it is to come. So yeah, correct. I uh, I, I, I like mean, that it, answer. It's like, of course, I want to win majors. I want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do all that. But I know if I am not the you know the best me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the that none of those goals are going to happen. Right. You know. Yeah, that's. I mean, like I said, it'll, everything else will take care of itself going forward. Um, are you talking of the masters? Are you going to have a su- certain someone on the bag for the par three contest? Yep. We, uh, we have two things ordered. We've got the shoes for yeah. the missus, uh, that she's going to carry or walk around in for the day. And, uh, we have the outfit for the little one, mm-hmm. little things you learn along the way. Like they told us, you know, for, you know, the like toddlers, basically, you know, the white jumpsuit for all the caddies. Yeah. There's, they have like their person that you got to go to, to get that <laughs> ordered and everything. Right. And so it's been all little things that you learn along the way like that. It's been, it's been cool, but yeah, that, that's a, uh, that's just super, super exciting. And, and it'll be, uh, man, it'll be a, just a, a dream come true, yeah. you know? And, and no doubt it, family dad's going oh yeah yeah take it, it all in oh yeah it's if anyone has tickets that wants to you know give me some come <laughs> on i i need all of them yeah. uh we've got a bunch of family and friends coming but now it'll man it, it'll be like i said it'll be a dream come true and and a bunch of family a bunch of friends and it'll be a, a fun week so i'm excited to get there the next couple of days uh to kind of get rid of the off factor. Like I yeah. said, I've never played it. So it'd be nice to play it a couple times mm-hmm. before the week of, so that, you know, I'm not sitting there looking around thinking about all the shots I've seen right. for the last 20 years while watching guys, you know, win tournaments yeah. and, you know, lose tournaments and everything. So it's, yeah, man, it's, it's going to be cool. Yeah. I mean, if I ever get the chance, it's like, it, it's something that you want to take an eight hour round to be out there because you want to <laughs> research all those shots. You know, you want to think of like Phil's shot on, you know, on 13 through the trees or, mm-hmm. or whether it's like, I mean, tiger shots down 10 and i mean all of the stuff right like Mm -hmm. and also it's it's going to be interesting to to kind of catch up with you after you've played and hear the difference between playing there with nobody there and playing there with crowds because of just you know when you see those pictures with nobody there it's just like wow this is massive yeah you know when you see it with crowds you're like whoa like yeah you know you hit down that shoot on 18 you're like this is yeah you know, this is really tight whereas you know when when there's nobody there i'm sure it's it's a little different but right that's super exciting it's uh it's so ironic that you're going tomorrow i love it you yeah. um getting towards the end obviously you know th- this has been an awesome time you know the last three years has been really cool for you in, in the time that we've chatted um but one of the, you know, one of the, obviously if people watching the recording, there's a huge case of wine behind us. I know nothing of wine, but I know that there's some really, probably really cool bottles up there. Some of them, are, <laughs> the ones that I would pick are the ones that look really cool. Um, but I don't think we touched on, you know, like your passion for food and wine. I mean, it, uh, do you want to own a winery one day? Do you want to have a private label? Like, I mean, oh man, I mean, that, those are like... <sighs> Yes, yeah. I don't know if I can make enough birdies with, with a bunch of guys to make that happen. Uh, but hey, like so, one of my um, good buddies that I, I think you know him as well. Uh, so his father-in-law uh, has is is a, a drinker of fine wine, mm-hmm. and um, I was at his house just recently in uh, Scottsdale, and he just has like you know in a in a wine collection like. You know, not that this is a collection, but there's you'll see a bunch of like kind of the same bottles of wine. It's because guys will order, you know, a, a case, case at yeah, a time or yeah. something. And uh, this this father in law of my buddies, um, he just didn't have like a lot of the same bottles of wine. I'm like, 
this is weird. Like, you know, yeah. it's really good wine, but like, what's going on? And he goes, I am not a collector. I am a consumer. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I don't know if I have a goal of having a winery someday. I just uh, will continue to be a consumer yeah. and uh, a an aficionado of finding uh, good, different wine. And it's just, hey, it's a good reason to go travel the world a little bit, yeah. maybe go over to France after the British Open mm-hmm. and go find something that's different than here in the States. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's definitely a, a, a passion. It's something I love. It's I, what I love most about it is the community of it. It brings mm-hmm. the great way to bring people together and spend time over opening a bottle of wine and, yeah. uh, and hanging out. So it, it's, man, it's, it's cool. And I'm excited to see maybe where this, you know, this passion takes me yeah. you know, as, as life progresses. Well, and no doubt it serves as a way that just takes you away from thinking about golf every day, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's something that, especially on your travels, you know, and, and people people who follow you on Instagram can go see that like if you're not you know if you're finished playing golf and you're in a place that's got a good winery or a good restaurant most of the time you're there because it's not just oh I need to go out for food and drink you're actually interested in the places the chefs and now you understand the wine and the whole process so it's mm-hmm. not just about eating and drinking anymore is no it? no for sure it, it's like I said it's 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 a passion and anyone that's in you know, has a, uh, any kind of a excitement or, uh, you know, wants to know about mm-hmm. it. There's like, there's a, just that likeness and people that it's just something people come together yeah, on. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's a, it's a people from all walks of life, mm-hmm. uh, tend to have, you know, uh, something they are passionate for and when it happens to be wine it's just yeah. makes it fun man it's it's a it's a cool journey it's it's not for everybody right. i'm not going to try to turn everyone into a wino uh but that's what's cool about too it's like i you don't have to like be this like wine snob for us to sit down and have a glass of wine right. it's just a good way to just get someone together at dinner or after dinner have a glass yeah. of wine and you know go hang out so i, I, I yeah. love it yeah I, I every time that i've been on on golf trips with a certain guy who loves wine and he orders the wine, I drink it because I know he's like, he gets it. He's yeah. got, a, you know, like a, not a collector, but he understands, yeah. um, you know, and he, he, he does the whole sn- sniff thing and the oh, swirl. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Steve, you understand things. <laughs> I will take a glass of that because I, you know, it's not like your yeah. average $10 bottle hey, off the shelf, you know? Hey, we all got to have that friend. I just happen to be that friend sometimes. <laughs> Definitely. The other passion that I know that we both share is cars. So I know you don't have a lot of time, for, like most people, to no. go enjoy these cars. But thankfully, due to a wonderful new sponsor of yours, um, you have some new Cadillacs in the driveway. I do. I do. Uh, it was funny. So last fall, I had a, an old Yukon Denali uh-huh. uh, that, um, you know, you start hearing about used car sales prices. And it's like you know, let's see what we can go get for this. And, uh, ironically I'd seen as probably a lot of golf fans had seen some of the commercials and advertisements Mm -hmm. for Wilson up in Stillwater. Um, and I knew that, you know, the guys at Wilson had a good relationship with Oklahoma state golf team. So I just, you know, give him a shout. And I'm like, man, you know, thinking about trading this in. And he's like, man, I've been following you. Maybe we can talk about, you know, some kind of a partnership here. And and so it ended up working out and, uh, obviously they're awesome and they're doing a great job. And, uh, I, you know, they took care of me and, and so I've got, I've got the family car and I've got Mm -hmm. kind of a fun car, which by the way, when this is over, I'm going to have to (laughs) let you start this thing up. Well, yeah. And also it's not, sadly, it's it's It's, horrific weather to go driving and that thing would go, especially with this thing, especially with that thing. It's just going (laughs) to spin tires anyway. But, um, yeah, it's, it's one, another thing too, that and I know there's a lot of guys on tour that, that kind of, I mean, Ian Poulter is probably the most famous one that has a collection yes. and has basically a separate house next to his house. That's full of cars. Yes. Um, and By he's the way, real quick, smart. uh, so at the match play, uh, WGC match play mm-hmm. in Austin last year, I was playing against Paul Casey, which by the way, he's sponsored by Porsche, right? <laughs> yeah. He has Porsche on his back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we started talking cars, right? And so, uh, obviously, he's been Ryder Cup teammates with mm-hmm. Ian Poulter. And so, I, I haven't spent any time around Poulter's, but so I know he's a car guy. Yeah. So, I just bring up a conversation. I'm like, all right, what's like... Also, by the way, real quick, next week, I'm playing Arnold Palmer, which is where uh, Ian Poulter lives. Yeah. Uh, remind me, I'm going to shoot you a text, right. a picture every day of... Because he brings a different car every day. Okay, yeah. I mean, and it is... It's ridiculous. Oh, they're, it's, they're multi-million dollar work cars. Oh, like, it's absolutely. amazing. And that's yeah. so. That's what Paul Casey, he goes, he goes, you know, Ian Poulter, he goes, Ian's never got 
a dime in his bank because his investments are in cars. Yeah, cars. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's funny because I mean it, he literally I mean he has the most insane. I mean he's got Enzos. Mm -hmm. He's got I mean he's got them all, dude. Yeah. Ferrari happens to be one of them, uh, and so he's got a little bit of everything yeah. from what I've been told and partly what I've seen. Uh, but dude, it, yeah. So remind me next week. Okay. I'm gonna shoot you some each day. I'll shoot you a picture of what he what he yeah, brings because yeah, it's yeah. it's absurd. Uh, one thing I you know to that point I guess what would be you know, the, the, not the gold car, because like, you know, there's, there's, I could name 10 and I'm sure you could as well, but <laughs> yeah. you know, if there is a time where you think I'm going to treat myself, like, I mean, what, are, what, right now, what would you buy? I mean, we've talked recently about this. GT threes are pretty freaking sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I love, cause so I had, so my dad worked at, uh, was in the car business for a while mm -hmm. and uh, worked at a Nissan dealership for a bit. And this was back in the 300ZX days. And so I, yeah. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is the coolest car ever. So then that proceeded to become, GTR was like, mm -hmm. that was, and, um, and so after kind of seeing, I have some other buddies who have some crazy cars and uh, I've, you know, sat and driven some of these crazy cars and, um, after driving like a GTR that's like an everyday kind of car versus yeah. like a Ferrari that like you're kind of afraid to, you know, take this turn a certain way. And like, yeah. it, you know, for me, that's what I, that's why Porsche is such a, in, mm -hmm. you know, such a draw entry because it's like, dude, I can drive this every day. Every day. Um, and so for me right now, that is, uh, I didn't say I said I didn't have goals, but I do have an okay. yeah. off the golf course goal. Yeah. I uh, I would love to have a GT3. I'm not. I don't know which one uh -huh. yet, uh, but I would love to have a GT3. Yeah. Right now is the wrong time to buy cars because they're astronomically expensive. That's exactly uh, right. But in a year or two, they may come down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the 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 next time I am able to drive one, I will bring it by the house and no, go out one because it's just it's an experience and the thing is it makes you feel like you're a much better driver than you are because they're <laughs> so easy to drive you know I get in a Mustang it's 500 horsepower and I'm scared but I get in a GT3 and I'm like I can drive I can do this anything yeah. um, but man this has been awesome I really appreciate your time I know we're getting up to an hour um you know, it's, it's been great to chat and we, we could chat for hours on, on golf and cars and, you know, lifestyle and all the kind of stuff like that. Um, and upbringing and, and just, you know, loving living in Oklahoma. Cause I've said this to many people, you know, who've been successful. A lot of people would have moved away by now, but you know, you're in the process of building a new house. You're clearly rooted here. You got family here, you know, other than the, the odd ice storm, which <laughs> the new house will take care of you, you know, your practice facilities indoors. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I don't think that we haven't talked about is kind of like Callaway, like you're, 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 you're a Callaway staffer. Um, what do you, what is your specs? I don't think we've ever talked about that. What's like your just general, like, I mean, for, for me, for example, I'm half inch long, one upright because I'm a little tall, but. So I'm the worst guy to ask about this. Cause you have I no have idea. No idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Does and it change weekly? Uh, like, do I you don't get, do you get know. clubs chained? Like, do you just send them in and say, Hey, I need like, I'm swinging it this way today. Trackman says this, will you bend it to make me hit it straight? No, 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 no. So I, I, I actually, ironically, like I have the same hybrid I've hit since 2015. Okay. I have uh, the same three wood I've hit since 2017. Like mm -hmm. we joke about all the time. It's like when you're a kid, like new stuff is so cool. Yeah. Right. It's like the yeah. new driver, the new wet iron, whatever it may be. It's like you want the, the new yeah. of whatever. And it's funny cause you get on, on tour and you, kind of everyone starts to fall into a, a different category of like you find something that you like and you know what it does yeah you don't want to change right right and so um i'm i'm not a big changer uh I, the only thing that i change on a regular basis are, are wedges. wedges yeah um but my hybrid and three would have stayed the same i will say i'm not married to a putter i'm not that guy so like if i'm not putting well or things aren't going in i, I bounce between like a blade and like a, a odyssey seven okay um yeah and so i have I, a center shaft, sh center shaft seven that i've okay. had for 15 years okay like yeah. I, I just won't change <laughs> there you go and, yeah. and and so that and that's what like there's guys that are married to their putters yeah. and then there's guys like me like i'm i'm not married to a putter so i'll jump around a little bit on on putters uh and then the wedges change probably once every three or four weeks yeah uh just to get as fresh a grooves as right. possible basically as soon as the grooves start to wear it all 
I jump into some, you know, the new one, yeah, uh, yeah. a new set. And so, uh, but no, man, it, it's, it's, Calvary's been great. I mean, they make yeah. all great stuff and it's, 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 it's easy to stay with the same equipment because it's just with them and, and, you know, like the, the irons, I've had the same irons now for about five years. Like I've, I've gotten, mm-hmm. you know, a fresh set, but, yeah, I, but the same. I use a seven, eight, nine blade and the four, mm-hmm. five, six, one of some of their, you know, cavity backs. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I try to, I try to not change as much you know as much as possible right. i try to stay as keep things as, as yeah. the same as much as possible do you change up the stamps on the wedges or do they stay the same i i it's kind of funny um i of course right out the gate like i was like new stamp here new stamp here or like yeah. and then finally i was like all right it's just too much work just give me new wedges i don't care if there's stamps <laughs> on it like whatever the only time yeah. i've requested stamps over the last couple of years was uh, at the open, I wanted to have, yeah. you know, Collins, my baby girl, I wanted mm-hmm. to have, uh, her initials on a, on a wedge. And so that was, that's the only time I've requested yeah. any stamps over the last couple of years. That, I mean, that's fair, right? That's justified. Um, I played one tour event when I was back in Wales. I played the Wales open, uh, oh, in awesome. 2014 oh. at Celtic Manor. And that oh. was only because they, so sweet. Three, well, what was, so three of us played, three of us who made the Welsh national team to play World Am yeah. played the, we played World Am in Japan. Japan in like and then the week later we played the European tour and then I came late back to school and like oh, the entire the well I know right <laughs> the entire goal for me that week was to just like see how much stuff I could get of right? course absolutely Which like I and my I had a buddy on the tailor-made truck at the time so I had like I had new driver two new three woods and I still have that three wood today because when you find something that works you don't want to get rid of Correct. it right um and it, it's just it's got a project next shaft in it but it's got like the rbz original rbz livery on the uh, shaft so yeah, everyone's yeah. like who's this duffer with like a, a slider three <laughs> right, with this, right. you know, this random shaft in it um but being at an event like that it's kind of really cool to just be inside the ropes and i kind of got that experience i played i think i like missed the cut by two i think yeah. it was like one over one over and it's just like i played with um Anthony Wall and John Hahn, who was an American guy from Ohio, yeah. who shot 59 or 58 at European Tour Q School. is what he's kind of known for. Because yeah. he shot like 59 and then 78. Yeah. Um, but like my entire goal that week was to try and get a circle T and I had no chance of doing it. <laughs> right? You know? Cause oh, like, yeah. They like just want one. And I have a head cover, right? Typical golf pair. Yeah. I have a circle T head cover, but I don't. You know? And I, I've putted with them in the past and I putted with one that was kind of the same as Rory's. Like he had like a, it was like the old number five Odyssey putter, but it was a Scotty Cameron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like welded shafts and I putted with that and it was the worst feeling putter I'd ever played with. <laughs> I was so disappointed because I like gave it back to my friend. I was like, I don't want this. Right, like, right. It's worth $2,000. I just don't. Yeah. You can't get away right. from me. So um, it's, it's funny. Are you, right. are you a collector? Do you try and get stuff like that tucked away? Well, that's like a, a, tour rat so tour right rat. there. I, that's the only thing that I, I, I mean, that's the only kind of golf geek thing yeah. still in me is I, I love the head covers. And so, mm-hmm. uh, Toulon, you know, cause obviously Scotty did such a great job from a marketing perspective, like everyone wants head covers. Right. And so, yeah. um, every other company has kind of fallen Followed in line that. and, and yeah. done something similar. And so, uh, that's one thing. Anytime there's like a special edition, special run mm-hmm. head cover out on tour, uh, Joe Toulon, who, uh, is the, the tour rep for Odyssey slash Toulon putters okay. for, for Callaway. Yeah. Um, I'm always like, Hey, give me one Get of those, dude. Of those. Uh, but I have a, another funny story real quick. When you said, you know, being at a tour event, you know, you want to get as much as possible. Right. When I turned pro, I got a sponsor in t- invite into the FedEx St. Jude's yeah. classic, which, uh, was in Memphis, you know, back in 2014, uh, and basically first of June. And at the time I hadn't signed, uh, uh any contract with any manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, one of my buddies was there. And so we're, I'm feeling, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, all right, so no, I haven't signed with anybody yet. I'm talking with these couple companies. I'm like, let's just go and just let's let them recruit us here. Yeah. And so one of my buddies, we were able to get him a putter. We like got him a, a, a Circle T got him a couple head covers, the whole thing, and, and so we went and raided as much as we could that week because <laughs> there's just nothing better than walking on the tour van and just having, you know, run a toy place, shop basically. Yeah, toy you know? shop. so yeah, it's exactly it's a yeah. toy shop. That's exactly right. That's one thing that I think through through like some of the there I won't mention the name of the company, but there is a company who have a pretty good kind of well, both companies have a pretty good social media presence actually, but they have you know a certain guy who does a tour truck thing, and it's amazing to see the truck like 
go from just a just a just a single truck to now it like expands out like i mean it's a motorhome basically oh, the yeah. stuff that they do there i mean it's incredible what they do mm-hmm. it's really cool to you know just to see that and be involved in it and see the differences and people's lockers on the truck and like that was kind of neat for me to see that but oh yeah um different, we're, you know it's awesome we're so uh we just started i don't think we've talked about this actually we just started a foundation and oh, we're really? gonna have a foundation tournament Sweet. Uh, talk about it let's tell tell the people about it yeah so we're, we're gonna have a our first event for the foundation my wife and i have talked for a while about wanting to start a foundation and um last fall basically the tour has this kind of um uh, fall series kind of competition sure. and, and the winner was given money to give it to a um a t- charity of their choice and i end up winning mm-hmm. and so i said hey if i can start my own foundation could I give that money to my foundation? And, and so yeah. it ended up working out. And so it was just, again, such a God thing because most, most guys, there's a lot of guys who have a, a foundation on the PGA tour. Yeah. Right. And, uh, most of them have their, you know, their event every year is a, a golf tournament, fundraiser golf tournament yeah. for, for their foundation, raise money. And, um, it was just the timing of it was so perfect because this spring in May, PGA championship uh-huh. at Southern Hills. And so in my backyard, yeah, where my roots are we're gonna have uh the monday after the pga championship we're gonna have our first event uh at tulsa country club which okay. is yeah you know, five ten minutes from southern hills one of your favorite courses uh, right yeah, yeah yeah yes and um and so it's 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 gonna be super super cool uh we're, we're i mean we're incredibly excited obviously mm-hmm. and we're actually not we haven't announced anything yet uh we're just now kind of getting it organized but Amazing. um man it's gonna it's gonna be super cool we'd love to have you there that day We'd in some sort of capacity yeah. um but yeah man it's, it's gonna be super cool i now forget how i even got on this but yeah, yeah it's yeah, gonna yeah. be no, it's that, gonna be super that's cool that's amazing and that's really cool to you know like i said it, it's really cool to back to what you said earlier finishing up is that you know you're not going to be just known for what you do on the golf course right Mm -hmm. and just kind of like leaving like a legacy or whatever you want to call it of an impact you look through that foundation and that is the impact that you know the fruits of your talent of all the effort that you've put in you now funnel through this this foundation and see the impact that it has Mm -hmm. you know and that's i mean one of the you know that's the one of the best ways to do that right is through a foundation to dedicate that to impact and something yep. that both of you are passionate about you mm-hmm. know you and Ali can do together and and just kind of you know it, it's something that that hopefully will will outlast you and, and yep. live on for a very long time yeah and, you know? and and back to like earlier when you asked about goals and that's why I said you know that's why I said you know I don't really like to make goals because mm-hmm. you know I've you know been so blessed and fortunate that we're doing things that I didn't even Right. think were possible and this is like one of those things i never even thought it was possible to start a foundation like you only yeah, think yeah. of like foundations as like these billionaires that right. go and do this you yeah, know whatever yeah. and it's like man i just i had no idea that this could be in my future mm-hmm. and it's just so cool how god has laid the path for this journey and, and for us to you know to, to shine light on him and to, to give back. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's what we're called for. And, and we're just, man, it's, it's going to be super cool. It's going to be, I'm super excited. And, uh, obviously, you know, our focus is going to be on, on youth, on, mm-hmm. on children, on kids, and, and just trying to, you know, provide opportunities and provide experiences. And, and, you know, for, for those that are less fortunate, plain yeah, simple, yeah, yeah. we want, we want to uplift, you know, those who are in need. And, um, and so there's a couple organizations that we're going to, partner with early on um you know that that we're excited to help out and to see it's gonna be so cool to see the the impact that we're gonna be able to to make and like i said it's 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 such a such a god thing we're we're super excited awesome dude i think it's a great way to finish man that's uh it's it's been great to share some awesome stories over the last hour appreciate your time uh finally congrats on the win i don't think i've told you in person (laughs) that so congrats on the win thank you Uh, you. congrats on the foundation it's amazing obviously you've been married you got married since 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 we last sat down which i'll never forget the day you got married because it's also my birthday which is hilarious so like every time you post your anniversary thing i'm like oh yeah it's my yeah, birthday. happy birthday yeah, so, yeah like, happy <laughs> anniversary um and obviously you know you're wonderful little girl as well so yeah, congrats on you. all of that um have a great time tomorrow and the next couple of days at the at augusta um, thank you, thank you, know, you. That's just, I mean, can't wait to hear. If some phones stories. are loud, I'll shoot some pics. I don't know how <laughs> yeah, they're allowed here. Are loud. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but for people listening, I'll put Taylor's Instagram. And um, do we have a website for the foundation yet? 
Uh, we do. Okay, I'll put the links to the foundation yep. and and all the Instagram stuff in the description. And for people listening, we will catch you next episode. Cheers. Thank you. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.